Welcome to Healthy Living, where each week we speak with a guest about important issues happening at Garden City Public Schools. Our guest for Healthy w Living is Polly Witt, Coordinator of Health Services. Welcome to Healthy Living, Polly. Thank you, Catherine. It's great to be here. So the Garden City Commission recently declared January 21st through January 27th as Health Awareness Week for all citizens. They also issued a proclamation urging all citizens to take advantage of the wellness opportunities in this town. So can you tell us a little bit about what the district is doing to promote health and wellness? Oh, it's exciting to be here. This will be our 16th year for Health Awareness Week. Uh, as you said, it, the city commission has declared it for all citizens, but for the school district, we're kicking it off on Monday, the 22nd, and Mayor Sarah Roy Cessna will be at Gertrude Walker School to read the proclamation to kick the week of activities mm -hmm. off. And we look at promoting health through nutrition, through physical activity, through screenings, uh, such as uh, vision and hearing screenings, diabetes screenings, that type of thing. We look at it also through just having fun and mm -hmm. uh, using different activities to incorporate these, any kind of health activities that you can think of. So the district does that, but throughout the year we do lots of activities. In October we, we kick off with the walk to school day, mm -hmm. and then in November it is uh, the Great American Smokeout, so we talk about that. And then in January we do the Health Awareness Week, which is where we do lots of big activities. And then for February we look at Dental Health Month and taking care of our teeth and mm -hmm. um, using all of the right tools to do that. And then we have the Red Ribbon Week activities, and we get into the third grade fitness fun days. Mm -hmm. So all year long we promote health in the school district. Uh, the district does have a district-wide wellness policy, and uh, it is based on federal guidelines. And for that, they look at what food is served in the school, as well as minutes of recess and physical activity, PE for like the high school age students. Mm -hmm. They look at uh, what foods are served throughout the school day. So it's not only the meals, but also like classroom parties and uh, snacks. And so it's a, it's a whole district-wide wellness policy that follows the federal guideline. So, but then at the building level, the district have what we call wellness champions, and they're kind of the building leader mm -hmm. to look at health promotion for uh, what activities a certain building might like want to do. So each building has the unique opportunity to design activities. Uh, several of them have health nights and mm -hmm. invite the entire family to come and celebrate and uh, do health activities such as milk mustaches <laughs> and uh, uh, fun activities, learning about how much sugar is in various drinks. And so it's, it's exciting to see all of the opportunities mm -hmm. that the district does to promote health and wellness and enhance our well-being. So you mentioned something about screenings. Could you tell us a little bit about what those are and what your department does with that? Uh, yes. <clears throat> we do four major screenings, vision and hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, we do screenings at least every other year, if not every year for students. Uh, not only, it's just an initial screening, so it doesn't take the place of the optometrist or your, your ear doctor, mm -hmm. but it does give us a baseline, and if they fail our screenings, that doesn't mean that they fail, but it just means they need to have further follow-up mm -hmm. with the professional. And so then the school nurses will follow up with that. They'll send letters home to the parents, mm -hmm. and then they will also follow up if it was a referral to see if there's any resources that are available. Uh, two other screenings that we do are a little bit more specific. We do dental screenings. Uh, that's a collaborative project with Lifetime Smiles. That's an agency here in Garden City. And the dental hygienist comes in and we do dental screenings on students in early childhood through sixth grade. And uh, if, with parent permission, mm -hmm. we also will do a fluoride treatment to help prevent any cavities from forming. Uh -huh. So that is a major thing that we do in mm -hmm. the fall. Uh, another uh, screening that we do in a collaborative project is with St. Catherine Hospital. We do exercise-induced asthma screenings on fifth graders. Um, the reason we do fifth graders is that's right before they get into all of the, the sports, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure if we have any students that are having difficulty breathing when they're doing physical activity that we want to get those identified and get them the help that they may need. So those are the four major screenings that we do throughout the school year, and the school nurses coordinate and uh, do most of those. 
Well, that sounds great. Um, also, with this time of the year being the flu season, what precautions would you urge that citizens take to stay healthy right now? Well, the first thing, if you have a, do, a cough, it's called the Dracula cough, cough into your elbow. Mm -hmm. um, we want to share things with our friends and family, but we don't want to share our cold. So, uh, but one of the main things that I encourage people to do is get the flu shot. And it's not too late to get the flu shot. Uh, the flu shot is not 100% protective, but it does give you the best protection that we have when it comes to the influenza type flu or the respiratory flu. But if you do get the flu, it's important that if you're running a fever to stay home, um, and for a fever, we're talking 100 to 101. Uh, a mild, low grade, 99 is usually not the flu. But when it gets over 100, it's important to stay home until you're not running a fever. Drink lots of fluid. And uh, as I said, if you have a cough, cover your cough. Um, if you use a tissue, be sure and throw it away. But coughing into your elbow is the new protocol that we encourage uh, because respiratory can spread like three to four feet. So you want to make sure that you get coughing to the floor and not coughing on your friends. Well, thank you. So also the district is promoting uh, activity across it. What are some of the things that the district is currently doing right now to promote that? Well, we are trying to be called the active schools. Uh, several of the staff have gone to state trainings and actually the last in-service day we brought in state trainings into the school district to train more staff. And active schools, the idea behind that is to have activity in the curriculum. So for example, if you're doing math, you could incorporate activity with that. You know, roll a dice and come up with a two and another dice and three and you got six, do six jumping jacks. And there's a strategy behind to keep that movement going, but incorporating it into the curriculum so that you're, you're learning, but you're also moving. Studies have definitely shown that more activity, the brain fires up, we're having more oxygen come to our brain, and that we can learn more and we retain it better. So we really need to have more activity in our classroom settings, and so we're called active schools. So that's the fun thing about it. So speaking of things like happening in the classrooms, there are also things you guys are implementing like brain breaks. Could you tell us about a little bit what those are and what they do and why they're important in schools? Well, brain breaks is, um, as I have trouble just sitting here for this short time, let alone for an hour or two hour block, a period of not moving. Mm -hmm. And so it's important at least every 45 minutes to 60 minutes to get up and move. And a brain break could be just simply getting up and doing a few jumping jacks or several of the younger um, elementary schools are doing what they call go noodle. And it's just a video that they put on that has music and kids leading it and doing silly activities, dancing, moving and moving two minutes, one minute, and then you're back to task. And you actually have found that you can retain more and learn more by having those brain breaks and giving more oxygen to our brains by just sitting. That sounds great. Um, I know we've covered a lot in our time here together. Is there anything you'd like to add before we go? Just want to invite everyone to next week's activities of Health Week. Uh, the mayor again will be at Gertrude Walker School at 810 on Monday morning reading the proclamation and kicking it off for us. And all of the schools are having various activities. So I hope all students and staff and community members will come and enjoy the activities with us. Well, thank you, Ms. Witt, for speaking with us. Um, we've been speaking with Polly Witt, Coordinator Health Services for Garden City Public Schools. Thank you for watching Healthy Living, where we speak with a guest about important health issues happening at Garden City Public Schools.